Hi, I'm Josh Ackman, Park Industries Customer Service Department. On this video, we're going to show you how to shoot vacuum critically low alarm here, or low vacuum alarm. This is done on a 3000 series Titan, um, so everything on a 3000 should look very similar. Otherwise, also this uh, same process will apply to all the other Titans. So to start out with here, if you're getting one of these alarms, we're going to come over and first thing to check is vacuum water flow. Making sure on this gauge you're getting two to five PSI of your water flow on here. If you're not, we do have another video to troubleshoot your vacuum water flow. Now, if you're getting that, then first thing to check would be your anti-cavitation valve. Making sure if you hold your finger over the end of this valve here, it should suck your finger down. If it's not sucking it down, we have an issue with the anti-cavitation valve and it's not doing a good air to water mixing ratio to, to create your vacuum. Next thing to check would be that we're, if we're getting good vacuum up here. So to start with, we would turn this ball valve off so that eliminates anything else down line for our vacuum. If we are not reaching factory settings are 19 pounds of mercury here, if we're not reaching at least that, then we have an issue with our water flow, our anti-cavitation, or our pump. If we are reaching that, we can keep moving on then, turn this valve back on, and come over to our float valve here. First thing to check would be this line. Remove this line when we do not have float on there should be no air blowing out this line. If you do have air blowing out this line, when the float is off, then we can go down to the other side of the water filters there is the regulator for the float. Turn that regulator all the way down and see if we can get good vacuum. If you do get good vacuum then, then the valve, the MAC valve for the float is bad and allowing air to come through all the time. Next step would be this valve here, this Spartan valve. When the float is on, this valve should be turned in the off position. It is kind of backwards from how you would think it would be. But if floats on, this should be off. When we do, when we have the float off, this red, this indicator should be in the on position. We want to make sure that that's turning also then to close this off so that we only get the float to the top side of the pods when we are trying to float and it's not trying to pull a vacuum from the bottom side of the pods and blowing air through our system here. The next step would be to inspect our lines going out to our manifold. So we're gonna follow these two lines here. These were supply lines going out to each manifold, making sure we do not have any holes or anything in our lines. Once we inspect all them, our next step would be up by the table. So we are gonna reposition here and show you up by our table and our manifolds what you need to look for. Okay, now that we're up by the table, we inspected our lines, don't see any issues with our lines going to our manifold. Um, at this point, we would make sure all of our valves are shut and seeing if we can get good vacuum then. If we still cannot get good vacuum, we need to go back and take a look yet. Either, either a valve is leaking, or we do have a hole in our lines, or the manifold or something is bad there. Um, if we are getting good vacuum yet with all these valves shut, then our issue is from these valves um, out to the table and the pods here. So first thing, to do to start out with would be to slowly turn on one line at a time and uh, just watching the vacuum really closely to see where you get a drop in vacuum. You do want to start then from there inspecting the lines going to the pods and the pods themselves if you get a good drop in one of them. With the lines we want to make sure none of the lines are cut um, 
cut or pinch real bad because there could be a cut there then also. We also want to inspect the ends of our lines. If these lines look like they're pretty rough at the ends, just snip them back a half inch and make sure you have nice 90 degree cuts on those lines. From there then, if your lines all look good, then we're dealing with that it's more of a pod um, and or table material issue here. So first thing to check would be inside the fittings. There is an O-ring in there that you wanna make sure that that's still there and that did not fall out. That's what seals off your line inside there. Also making sure you can't feel that you're getting, uh, the threads are leaking there, that it came loose or anything. So check the O-rings in both sets, whichever pod set you're using here. From there, if that's all good, then you'll want to see if, uh, inspect all your seals here on the top and on the bottom side. And you can test each pod to see if it's your top side or the bottom side that's leaking there. Want to make sure you have a nice seal all the way around, even where your seam is, that there's no gaps there. That can cause leaks there with that. Um, on the bottom side, making sure, especially on the bottom side here, that especially on the aluminum cups, that it did not get dinged and it's holding it up actually with that. Top side of the BBC cups, just making sure there's no cuts or anything like that out of them. Then if all that checks out, I would take a look at the table and the material, making sure that the table that's not too much of a film on it, um, scratches, dings, stuff like that. It can be sucking that out from and not creating a nice seal with that. With your material, just making sure your material is straight, um, especially with the engineered stone, engineered uh, material nowadays can come warped. And uh, if it cannot actually vacuum and suck it down fully, that can cause an issue. You'll have just a small gap on one side of your pod where it's not able to seal off. That's pretty much everything for low vacuum alarms. If you have any questions, please give our customer service department a call. We'd be happy to answer them. Thank you.